Debris from the submarine lost in Indonesia has been found. But where is the submarine? Could it have been lost into the seabed forever? And how will they recover the submarine when found? I will in this video explain some of the challenges of why it may be extremely difficult to recover the submarine once found. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumbs up. We can see in the media that the submarine is very likely lost at 850 meters water depth or 2,800 feet. At this water depth, the seabed will almost certainly be clay, so soft that it is basically a liquid. The clay in this bucket is very similar as the clay found at the location. It is nearly liquid. Therefore, it is easy to assume that the submarine could have been swallowed into the seabed and completely gone and will never be found again. I have here made a model of the submarine and will now drop it into the clay. And we will see what happens when the submarine hits the clay. This is a scary scenario to think of, but the scenario is probably not likely. We know that when we drop a stone in water, it will fall through the water much more gentle than when it falls through the air. Therefore, it is likely that the submarine has landed more gentle than my model and that it can be found. This is why wreckages such as the Titanic have been found in these water depths. To recover the submarine, divers would be a great help. The divers here were used at the Russian submarine Kursk in 2000. However, divers can only dive down to a depth of around 200 meters or 600 feet. And if the submarine is at 850 meters, then there is only one tool that can do this job. The remotely operated vehicle or ROV. The ROV is typically a machine with arms and can complete simple and also complex tasks. If you want to lift the submarine to the surface again, the submarine is partly buried deep into the clay. Then you may likely need to be able to get lifting slings under the submarine. But the ROV is just not made for such a complex operation. The arms are not long enough. It is more likely that the same technique used for Kursk will be used. A series of holes will be drilled on the top and hooks will be attached in these holes. I have linked a video that shows how the Kursk was lifted to the surface in the description. Here the challenge is how many hooks to use. I will now demonstrate what happens if too few hooks are used with a submarine model I've made. Here one hook is attached. The clay is sticky or as geotechnical engineers like to call it, cohesive. The single lift point will rip through the side of the submarine so more lift points are required. I have now attached three lift points in the submarine. The submarine is squeezed into the clay and we can see that the submarine is stuck in the clay. But I'm able to recover the submarine with the three load points. Another option of recovery is to use airbags. Airbags are a bit less controlled than lifting it. Therefore, airbags may not be used uh, without also combining it with the lifting uh, wires. The final one thing to consider is that the submarine is likely filled up with torpedoes and other weapons. It is likely that it's simply too dangerous to recover the submarine and the government may be forced to leave it on the seabed. If you like the video, please give the video a thumbs up and give me a comment. Also subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thank you very much.